Well, I must have been up to something for the three months I wasn't uploading. Today you get to see part one. Three upper kitchen cabinets. Hey guys, how's it going? So, while I explain what's going on, let's let past John unload the truck. I guess by the time you're watching this, we're both past John, but yeah. Further past. Further past John. So, within the last couple years, my aunt purchased a farm and has been working to get it set up and renovated since then. Back in June, I got a message from her asking me if I had any experience with building kitchen cabinets. Short answer, no, but I'm always up for a challenge. Basically, when you break it down to their most basic forms, cabinets are just big boxes, and I have built the odd box here and there. This one was for a dartboard, which you can check out up here. So this was a fairly big project, and I'm going to set up a playlist for the videos on this project that you can check out up here as well, but for the time being, let's just focus on these three upper cabinets. Basically what I needed to do after these corner cabinets were removed was flip and move this cabinet to the other corner, and then build three new cabinets for the gaps. And now with the truck unloading, I can get this project started. I don't know what I got myself into. There's a lot. My original thought was to salvage as much material as I could, so I brought as many of the old cabinets as I could to disassemble for reuse. I wasn't able to get as much out of them as I would have liked, but I was able to get some usable material out of them still. With everything torn down and moved out of the way, I pulled up the SketchUp model on my shop computer to reference my cut list and started breaking down sheets of plywood to rough width at the table saw. Then once they were a little easier to manage, I cut them to final width. Then over at the miter saw, I set up the built-in stop on my stand and cut down the verticals for the cabinet carcasses. To prevent chipping off the oak veneer, I just applied some painter's tape on the cut line. By the way, I'm building these cabinets out of red oak. Andy, you're all dusty. Why are you sitting there? <laughs> uh. Hi, Andy. With all of the verticals taken care of, I carry on with getting the tops, bottoms, and shelves cut to length as well. Back at the table saw, I ripped some strips of salvaged plywood to use as hanging braces on the tops and bottoms of the cabinets, which I cut to length at the miter saw. Then using some of the salvaged face frames, I milled down a bunch of solid oak to around 3 quarter inch square and cut them to length on the miter saw as well, trying to avoid as much of the previously biscuit joined sections as I could. These will be the supports for the shelves. And now that I have the parts cut and sorted into their respective groups, it's time for assembly. I opted to glue and screw the tops and bottoms of the cabinets directly to the sides through the tops and bottoms, as these screws will not never be seen. This does leave the plywood edge exposed on the sides of the cabinets, but nothing a little bit of edge banding won't take care of, especially since only two of the six total cabinet sides will be exposed. Well, technically two and a half, but... More on that later. To attach the hanging braces, I used glue and pocket hole screws to screw it into both the sides of the cabinet, and then right through the top and bottom again. And then repeated that process for the remaining two carcasses. With the carcasses built, I move on to the shelf supports. I measure out the distance between the top of the cabinet and the top of the support, and mark it out with my square. Then I clamp the square in place to rest the top of the shelf support right under my line, apply glue, and clamp the support down with some spring clamps. Then the same thing for the other two carcasses, and this step was done. The next day after the glue was dried and my SD card was cleared of footage, I began to install the shelving. I just applied some glue to the tops of the supports and set the shelves into place. Here's where I realized that the carcasses bowed open a little bit at the front, so with the shelf in place I clamped the sides of the carcass together and pinned the shelf down, which worked out quite nicely actually. And here is where I noticed my screw up with one of the carcasses. This is the front, so this side is the show side, which clearly that looks like garbage. But it's an easy fix. Flip it around, take this brace off, put it on the other side, take that brace off, put it on the other side. It's the same cabinet otherwise, and now this is the show side, and look. no chip out there so yeah I'm just a dumbass and put these on the wrong side so take these off a little bit of sanding a little bit of cleanup good to go and this is the unfortunate side of using glue it made pulling this brace off a little bit harder than I wanted and caused a lot more damage than I wanted it to 
it pulled off a lot of the oak veneer. So I cut and chiseled out the affected veneer. Looks like crap right now, I know. To fix this, I broke out the iron and the iron-on edge banding and patched up the missing veneer. I'm actually really happy with how well this worked out. Any edges that were left over were quite easily sanded out and even though the color match is slightly off, once the cabinets are stained you'll never notice it. Now that that blunder is out of the way, it's time to start the face frames. I start looking through the salvaged material but it doesn't look like anything here is long enough to use and I'm not about to scarf joint all of these together. So I hit up my lumber rack and grab a piece of 4 quarter red oak. So I don't have a jointer. The closest thing I have to a jointer is this chunk of 2x4, this one, that I clamp to the saw fence, which works for the most part, but not for something this big. So with a couple hand screw clamps to hold the board upright and an F-style clamp to bolt it down to my workbench, I break out the 4 foot level and the biggest plane I own, which is uh, number 6 Stanley Bailey, and start hand jointing the board, checking my progress every so often with the level. Definitely not the fastest way to do it, but the plane only cost me $30 at a garage sale, where a 12 inch helical head jointer could run up to $3,000. Not to mention that I can't really fit it in my shop right now, so yeah. Now that I have one side flat, I rip it into strips at the table saw. Plane the strips to final dimensions at the thickness planer, and after setting my stop lock up again, I cut the strips to just over the heights of the cabinets over at the miter saw. With the long sides of the face frames figured out, I lay them on top of the cabinets and line up the sides with the edge of the cabinet. Then I measure the distance between the edges to get the rough length I need for the short sides, which that I can use some of the salvaged oak, and a quick search through the salvage bin shows quick results. To make my life easier later on, I clamp my random orbit sander into my vise and sand off the original finish of the oak going through the grits from 60 to about 120 grit. I figured before I get too far ahead of myself, I should figure out the detail on the center rail for the two bigger cabinets. The original cabinets had this V cut through the center of the center rail, and since I am matching the existing style, the new cabinets will need that as well. The V groove bit I already have in my rotor bit set is close, but not exact, which was confirmed after the first run through the router table. I didn't like how it looked compared to the original. However, bumping the fence over slightly and running the board through again matched the original groove just enough for me to be happy with it, so that's what I went with. Now that I have the short sides and center rails figured out, I lined up the sides and bottoms of the long rails. Then being careful not to bump them, I marked off the excess with my marking knife and lopped off the extra with my miter saw. The short sides were pretty much the same. Making sure to not bump and move the long sides, I set the short side on top, held it down tight, marked off both sides with the marking knife and lopped off the extra with the miter saw as well. The other cabinets were pretty much the same process, except for here I measured out and clamped the center rail into place, since that really has no reference place I can get back to easily. The long sides are easy enough to fix if I accidentally moved them, but the center is a bit more of a pain. After I have all of the face frame pieces cut to final size, I move over to the table saw with my drill and pocket hole jig, and after I get the pocket holes drilled in the short sides, I start gluing and screwing the face frames together. Yes, I occasionally use my table saw for glue ups. It's flat and easy enough to scrape wood glue off of the cast iron. For the bigger face frames, I enlisted the use of my corner clamps and a long skinny drill bit to pre-drill the long sides a little bit to prevent the pocket hole screws from cracking the long sides. The next day after the face frames were assembled, I apply some glue to the perimeter of the cabinet, drop the face frame into place, pull, twist, and align it to the cabinet, pin it into place, and clamp it down to give it a little bit more bite into the glue. Actually going this way with all three was probably my least stressful glue up to date. Having PTSD flashbacks to the butcher block countertop I tried to make. Later that evening I came back and removed the clamps. Then I broke out the random orbit sander and eased over the transitions between the rails. I can see why those big drum sanders might be handy. With the sanding done, I broke out my trim rotor with the 1 8 inch round over bit and softened the edges of the face frames. Since the router couldn't get into the corners as easy, I just stuck some adhesive backed sandpaper onto a bloke of wood and matched up the corners as best I could. With the face frame now attached to the carcass, I use a little leftover shelf support and attach it to the back of the center rail with some glue and pin nails to support the middle of the shelves. And with that done, it's time for edge banding. Usually I like using solid wood edge banding more as opposed to iron-on, more because I really hadn't used it before. Now that I've used iron-on edge banding a bit more, 
I like using solid wood edge banding more. I might not have had as much issue if it was like melamine edge banding, but for the red oak edge banding I found that it was a bit of a pain to keep it from tearing out and ruining that particular piece. I think I replaced some of those pieces three or four times before I finally got it working. Between trying the trim plane, chisel, utility knife, etc., what I finally found to work the best was actually just a strip of sandpaper and sanding through the corner of the edge banding until it was weak enough just to pull off without tearing throughout the rest of the piece. And with that, the cabinets are mostly done. Once the cabinets are installed, they are going to be dressed with this custom molding. I'm not sure how it was originally made, but I figured it wouldn't be too difficult to replicate. So back over at the table saw, I rip another oak board into strip- holy board tension. Okay. Using the original piece, I set the fence in blade depth on the table saw and run the strips through the saw. Took a little bit and some trial and error, but I got there in the end. Then for cleanup, I broke out the sandpaper and card scrapers and attacked the pieces. And this was the last thing I did before I loaded half my shop into the borrowed trailer and hit the road to go install everything, which actually went fairly well. The corner cabinet that needed to be relocated caused a couple problems. Since that cabinet was installed on the opposite side of the kitchen when I did my initial measurements, I ended up having about a 3 16 of an inch less room than I thought I did. To get around that, my aunt and I installed the corner cabinet first, with a level across the corner and adjacent cabinets to make sure they were at least at the right height. Then I just needed to figure out how to get the new cabinet to shrink slightly to get it into place. Doesn't look like I recorded this section, but luckily the face frame of the adjacent cabinet overhung the side of the cabinet slightly, and after I took off the cabinet door and trimmed off the overhang with a flush trim bit and my trim rotor, the new cabinet fit perfectly. Probably could have done it with a hand plane, and it would have been a lot less loud and a lot less dusty. Probably more accurate, too. Remember when I said I only needed edge banding on two and a half of the six cabinet sides? Here's the other half. I completely forgot that this adjacent cabinet was only six inches deep. Luckily I brought the edge banding with me just in case. Last cabinet to hang is the narrow cabinet. From what I can tell here, the side of the corner cabinet isn't quite plumb, and if I tried to clamp the narrow cabinet onto it, the narrow cabinet wouldn't be plumb either. So I ended up mounting the narrow cabinet in relation to the window frame instead, and filled the gap between the corner cabinet and the narrow cabinet with effectively a big oak shim, and glued it to the side of the narrow cabinet. The last thing to do is install the crown molding and trim, which I cut to size on the miter saw outside and pinned it in place with the pin nailer. Admittedly, it looks funny right now with everything being two different colors, but a couple weeks later my aunt got it stained and finished. Without having built them myself, I don't think I would be able to tell you which ones were the original ones and which ones were new. I'm really happy with how this project worked out. This is just part one of a multi-part project. There's a few more cabinets that I built for this, as well as some cope and stick or rail and style, whichever it is, raised panel doors for the cabinets. Those videos will be coming out in the next few weeks, and the link to the playlist will be up here if they are out by now, and I hope to see you over on those videos as well. So, thank you all for watching, and if you like what I'm doing here, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. If you have any questions or comments, I look forward to reading them in the comment section below. And if you want to see more up-to-date projects, you can follow me on Instagram at JohnTheShriner. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next video, and have a good one.